Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we've got a special guest. As we go out to Menlo Park, California, well, that's where he lives, but he's actually in North Carolina in his new home, right outside of Mooresville, North Carolina. Our guest today is 16-year-old Jesse Love. Jesse, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. You know, not the best weather out here today, but uh, it'll get better. What's the weather like there today? Icy and cold and rainy, just a uh, yucky day today. Icy, cold, and rainy. That's not a good thing. So um, how do you like being relocated in the North Carolina area? It's great. You know, Toyota Race Development gives uh, older drivers a really great opportunity living out here and being able to do things like going to the sim um, almost every week and, and using all their resources at the gym and the people and meetings and everything like that. So, um, you know, I'm really grateful for the opportunity that I have with them and I just want to make the most of it and living out in North Carolina definitely does that for me. So, um, you know, definitely really awesome out here and, and it's, uh, it's really special and a cool place. So um, a lot of really amazing people out here and I'm having a lot of fun uh, being out here. It's pretty cool and I'm um, living the dream. Awesome, man. So let's kind of get right into it because we got a lot to cover uh, with you. And, and I want to start kind of quickly by just kind of recap in 2020. I mean, 2020 had to be an unbelievable season for you. Um, you were able to capture the Arca Bernard Series West Championship. So just kind of run us through your 2020 season, highlight a little bit, if you would. Yeah, we did a lot of stuff in 2020, honestly. Um, obviously, a, a pretty weird uh, year, but. Um, we started the year off right, winning a new Smyrna, um, really put me in the map, and, and it was really a big win for me and the team. And, um, you know, just so that was a big uh, a big moment for me, and that kind of set the year up really well. And um, getting to work with with BMR and Bill McAnally um, was obviously really cool. You know, we actually we podiumed in every single car we ran all year last year, whether it was uh, anything from a midget to a sprint car to a uh, super late model, pro late model, Arco West car um putting them at all which is pretty cool um so a really awesome year and uh, did a lot of cool things obviously won the arc west championship was a, was a really big deal for me and becoming the youngest nascar champion was super cool so um got to accomplish a lot of cool things and and do a lot of uh a pretty you know meet a lot of special mental met a lot of special people and made a lot of uh, cool relationships with a lot of different teams a lot of sponsors and um overall it's a really great year and um sets us up really well for this year so has it really kind of sunk in or how do you kind of um, relate to becoming the youngest NASCAR series champion in history? Yeah, it's pretty weird. Um, you know, it's cool. I always know I can do it. Um, but it's, it's honestly just one of those things where there's so much history behind it um, with NASCAR in general, obviously today with, with today being the day that, you know, we lost Dale 20 years ago or so. Um is, uh, you know, kind of just goes to show, you know, how much history there really is. And, um, you know, every day, every day there's new people that kind of come into the sport for the most part. And um, there's so many people, so many people I've tried to do, you know, make it in a sport. And um, to say that I could be the youngest NASCAR champion is, is something that's really cool. It's, you know, an opportunity you only get once, kind of like being rookie of the year in cup, right? You only have one opportunity to do that, right? So, it's uh, it's really cool for me and, and everybody involved with Toyota Race Development. And um, thankfully, my birthday falls in a year where it would take a lot for that record to be broken ever. So, um, you know, it's it's really special, and, and it kind of it's probably still hasn't really sunk in yet. And when it does, it does. But um, overall, just a really a really special moment, and uh, and it's really cool with all the history being involved you know, kind of saying that you are the youngest NASCAR champion is, is something that's really cool because there's so many people that I look up to in the sport. Well, and, you know, that that magical 16th birthday also allowed you to be able to go do something that I definitely know was on your bucket list, and that was to run the Chili Bowl. So the birthday kind of fell right at the beginning of the Chili Bowl. I think you might have even been in Tulsa when you turned 16 and had to, you know, run in the, in the later group of uh, – you know, heat races and qualifiers because you weren't, you were 15. So what was it like to go and actually compete at the Chili Bowl? It was really cool. There was, um, the, I went there two years before. I kind of went for the last two years before I actually ran the event. And like when I first kind of got to the track, like you can feel the tension in like the air. It's like a, 
you know, not like a, not to say it in a cheesy way, but like you can legitimately feel um, like the tension that's in the air and everything feels heavier. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, you can just, you know, feel the, you know, how big of an event it is and, and how many people are there, how many cars are there and the sound and everything just, you know, adds a lot of stress and not stress, but, um, you know, like I said, tension in the air is tension in the air is the best way I can explain it. And I felt it the first two years I went there. Um, it's kind of weird. The one year I went to ran it, uh, to, when the one year I went to run it, um, this year, I didn't actually feel any of that. So that was a little bit cool, I guess. And I think I did the preparation to where I don't have to feel that, uh, which is good. And, um, it was cool. Yeah. Like you said, I turned 16, like on Thursday. So I had her on the Friday night prelim. And, um, so I didn't get to practice on Monday. I didn't get to hit the track or do anything like that. Like everybody else did, but, um, we unloaded good, um, off the truck. We went to run hot laps and when I came off the track, we were first in, in our hot laps group, which is pretty cool. A lot of, uh, really good, really good guys were there. And, um, we went to our heat race and started on the pool of that kind of not the best pull draw, but if you're going to start on the pool, your heat race, actually, well, you have to win the thing. So, um, we started on the pole and, and had probably the most stacked heat race with, uh, I mean, everybody from Pittman to Tucker, to everybody that was in the thing was, was pretty tough. So um, I was able to get the lead in that right away off the bat and, uh, and lead all the laps and kind of get my rhythm and tempo going. And it's so frustrating because we had like 15 cautions in our heat race um, and you don't want that to chili bowl. So Pittman was behind me for a long time and, and obviously he's breathing down my neck the entire time and I was able to kind of get my rhythm and tempo going and obviously won the heat race and um that kind of set me up good for the qualifier I started fourth in the qualifier which is what uh Christopher did as well and then um I won the qualifier too so that was pretty pretty incredible so um had another pretty tough qualifier as well and I was able to get to I mean I knew I had to win the qualifier to set myself up good for the feature and uh, we went to turn one and I split third and second and I slid the leader and um, almost got the lead on the first corner and uh, got into second and was able to kind of hound the leader for a while. And then eventually caution came out and I was able to slide and want to restart and get to the lead and uh, never looked back after that one. And uh, our Friday night prelim A main was pretty cool too. started seventh in that. So I guess even if you win your heat race and win the qualifier, you still start seventh you know, kind of goes to show how hard, tough, the heat, how hard it is. Yeah. Um, you think they will start seven. You think heat race winner qualifier winner, you'd be on the pole again. You'd think so, but I guess not at least top four. The first two rows is what I wanted, but I was, I started seventh and I was able to pick off a few positions on the start and the bottom. Of course, like the one night, like my game plan was just to get to the bottom, but that's the one night where it was, you can on the top right away. And, um, you know, the, the berm's pretty tricky there, and, and I hadn't been a dirt car in a while, so I just kind of picked my lane on the top and just started ripping the top the entire time. And um, I wasn't quite driving right at the beginning. You know, my kind of my first time running the curb in a while, and uh, it was pretty tall that night and through the nose a lot. I actually backed up when I started running the top, but I didn't give up on it, and um, it started to charge back forward and almost got top five out of it. So um, that was a success for Tribble. You know, I always want to win, and I feel like I could go run the snowball derby and, and if I could run second, I would be pissed off about it. But, um, you know, Chile Bowl, it's kind of one of those events where I was pretty pleased with the performance. And I think everybody in the team was really happy with it. And, uh, and overall just a really you know special night and, and a cool night. So, um, had a good performance and, you know, definitely, uh, I was genuinely uh, pretty pleased about it. So I wasn't too upset about it. All right. And, and that's pretty tough because you go out there with the, with, you know, the premier team, which is KKM, and and knowing that some of your 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 toughest competitors are are basically your teammates. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was able to lean on a few of them, like Buddy, and um, I was able to ask Kanan a few questions, and Jason Percy, of course, I've always worked pretty well with him. So um, obviously, they all got laps on Monday night when I didn't, and uh, most of their prelim nights, with the exception of Tucker, were all before me. So I was able to ask most of them questions and and kind of watch and learn for before I went out. So. Um, obviously getting not to just ask them questions, but Keith and Pete, Kaz, all the guys on the team, Jarrett, all them guys were, was obviously really helpful for me and uh, kind of shortened my learning curve a little bit for the track. So Keith's cars are so good there that it kind of makes your job a little bit easier. So 
um, I had a lot of fun and, and it was uh, a really cool event and the track's awesome. Like the track is honestly really fun. I know it's not a legit like racetrack, like you'd see, um, you know, like Eldora or something like that, but uh, it's honestly, you know, really special place and a cool racing track. Yeah. Well, I think it's on so many racers bucket list and, and that was mm-hmm. evident about, you know, Kyle Larson being there, Chase Elliott being there, Briscoe being there. I mean, it was, it was definitely a stack field. Well, You've already been doing quite a bit of racing already this early in 2021. You've been, you're running the, uh, the winter heat series out at Charlotte Motor Speedway in the legend car. You just got back from the world series of asphalt stock car racing. Mm -hmm. Um, I I think that event needs a longer name. I don't think it's quite long enough, but talk to us a little bit about your experience down there. I know this was the second year with Wimmer Motorsports um, and that world series. And of course that's, that's where all the, the top late model drivers in the country come to kind of, you know, get their 2021 season started. So walk us through that just a little bit and, and what your thoughts was um, after you got that in uh, already in the books now this year. Yeah, I was really looking forward to that event. Obviously we had success there last year, winning on night two and uh, getting a lot of podiums. And it was just a really cool event in general. One of my, probably my favorite week of the year uh, as far as racing goes. So, uh, unloaded and our mobile one Camry really good and um, the team pair really good race car. We had a little bit of a different car this year, a little bit of a lighter Fury, um, but uh, pretty similar chassis, pretty similar motor, uh, nothing too different. But we honestly, we didn't quite unload how we wanted to on Thursday. Um, we were a little bit off, but uh, we weren't too upset about it. We always knew the cream, the cream would eventually rise to the top. So um, by night, uh, by night one, practice and qualifying. We were back on our on our game plan. We were first in a practice, second the other one, and then probably I think we got third in qualifying or something like that. And uh, or actually no, we didn't we didn't qualify well that night. Um, we actually qualified eighth that night. But on the start of the race, we were able to get to fifth and, and get to fourth and and start to uh, you know it looked like we were probably going to have a, a shot to win at it, even though it's one thirty five lap race. We were able, we were able to make up ground really quickly and even though our, you know, lackluster qualifying <laughs> attempt, but um, got to uh, up, to, up to the front really quickly. And then uh, unfortunately the motor let go and uh, the motor blew up. I actually, it dropped the valve probably lap six or so, and I ran it for a while. And then, um, you know, a lot of things that you don't necessarily think happen, happen when you have a motor let go. And um, I was able to hold on to it for a while. And then eventually that it, it, you know, it got too bad and we had to pull off and then, quit running so um you know that's pretty rare for uh, the motor that we ran and it was um, a little bit of a, of a of a shaky start but changed the motor had a pretty similar motor the next night and um night two qualifying got we were first in both practices and then qualifying got rained out um right. so we had to start the race off of our qualifying attempt from that night uh or from our finishing position from night one uh, so we had to start 19th because that was our DNF position um, and started 19th and, and drove kind of up, up to the front, but um, only 35 laps. You don't really want to kill the car doing that. So um, the first two nights, we couldn't do anything about it. It was a, pretty much just a scratch and had a reset after night three. We know our championship hopes were out of the picture. Nothing we can really do about it at that point, um, except just try to win as many races as we can and and qualify as well as we can. And the next night we kind of reset. We knew what we had for the car and we knew we were pretty confident with the car. And uh, we were first and second in the practices. We qualified on the pole. Um, so that was a good rebound from our qualifying attempt on night one and got the pole and qualifying. And then in the pill draw there, you can pull two, a four, a six, or an eight. And of course, because of how our week was going, we pulled an eight. So I had to start eighth in, in the short 35 lap feature. And uh, only picked up a few spots just you know you kind of got to know what nights you want to go do something what nights you kind of have to you know save the car and um we did everything we could on that night night four rolled around and um we kind of needed to uh you know bring the rabbit's foot out and, and change our luck around and we actually did pretty well we uh it was a 50 lapper that night and uh, qualified about third and of course, I'm off by third. Uh, they don't pull the four; they pull the two. So, um, we so we, no, we qualified sec, uh, second, and they pulled something that put us fourth. 
So we started fourth in the feature and uh, Griffith was on the outside front row. Derek is obviously really good there. And he got out to lead. I got to second, probably lap 10 or so. And uh, by the time I got or 15, by the time I got to lap, by the time I got to second, Derek was probably about a full straightaway ahead and it took me a long time to catch him. And um, I eventually got within about two or three car lengths at the end, but just ran out of time and ran out of laps. But we were really, really fast that night, and uh, that gave us a lot of hope moving forward. So we were able to get our first podium of the week out of the way, and um, we ended up uh, going, you know, getting a few more poles and a few more um, good podiums. We podium in the next 35 lapper, running third in that. Um, and then uh, the 100 lapper, which is the race that really matters. Uh, we started we start, We start. started third, and uh, if you ever heard the name Stephen Nassie, Bob Pollard in the front row, so – um, that was pretty cool to be are started. Those guys any, are those guys any good? Yeah, you might, might, not, might not heard of them, but, um, <laughs> you know, having Steven and Bubba start on the front row and kind of seeing how they race is pretty cool. And I was able to get by Bubba pretty quickly. And uh, me and Steven raced really hard the entire time. I kind of, I tried to save a little bit where I needed to, but I was able to catch him in, in a few different areas and I kind of get to him and, and maybe, you know, Gave him a little free and then get 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 give him a shot and kind of get to his inside. But he's just he's so good and he knew how to um, how to you know manipulate the situation and he was able to race me and, and we kind of both wore our tires down and and um, and he just kind of he got me at the end of there. So kind of a bummer. Uh, ran second in the, in the Orange Blossom One Hundred. So one of those nights where you know you can't really do anything about it, but um, except learn from it and, and know where I made mistakes and. Um, you know, we'll come back swinging the next time and, and something to build off of. So it gives us hope for the Derby and uh, all these next, you know, big marquee races, um, you know, being able to run with Steven and, and, you know, say you gave Nasty a run for his money is pretty cool. I grew up watching Steven and he was, you know, something I really looked up to in super late model racing. So um, learned a lot. Like I, you know, probably have a decent amount of my driving style based off of, you know, him and, um, you know, his give and take mentality. So, uh, it was cool to race with Steven and it uh, definitely, you know, sets a good tone for the next, you know, big races coming up in the super late. Um, well, the two of you definitely put on a great show and yeah, we did. I would have to say you learned, you earned a lot of respect from him because he raced you really clean. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people out there that, you know, you either fall into that he'll race you clean one or he didn't get the, the, the nickname nasty nasty for anything. I mean, um, he he will rough you up if he if you need to, but I, I just thought the two of you put on a great show. Um, so, you know, finishing second in, in the uh, in, in that hundred lap race, I think, was a major accomplishment. But let let's move on now because you have a race coming up. Uh, you re-signed with Bill McAnally Racing uh, for nine races. You're going to go out and defend your your championship um, on the West Coast. But there's two road courses in that in those races what do, what do you do you, are you looking forward to the road courses because you are a great road racer yeah thank you um uh, yeah i'm looking forward to them of course obviously going to i don't know if we're going to utah again this year but i know we're going to portland i know we're going to sonoma um you know portland looks really cool it's it's pretty similar to utah and uh that's a fast place that'll give me good experience for uh the rest of the you know stuff i might be doing in truck and xfinity and cup so um, or next year with, with Benarini again. So, um, that's be pretty cool. Um, Sonoma is probably the one I'm looking forward to the most. You know, I got a lot of laps around a decent amount of laps around Sonoma and, uh, I've already won one race there in a, in a legend car. So it'll be cool to go back there. And, and it's such a special place and such a cool place. So, um, that race was on my vision board last year, but, um, I'm, of, of course, it, you know, unfortunately got canceled with the uh, pandemic that happened, but, um, you know, hopefully it goes this year and hopefully we can get that race in. And, um, that's, uh, that'd be a really big uh, event for me to win. So, um, that me that race means a lot to me and a lot to, uh, what I grew up watching. So, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to that and, and going out and, and operating at that level. So, um, that'll be cool. Unfortunately, I'm not doing any road races with Venerini this year. Um, but, uh, I'm getting a few in with, uh, Bill McNally and the TCA stuff, which I'm doing in two weeks. So, um, a lot of cool different racetracks to go into this year and, and Toyota Race Development has put me in a lot of uh, good situations and I get to go to a lot of cool tracks and a lot of bigger tracks with Benarini and a lot to, uh, you know, cool short tracks and some road course stuff with uh, Bill McAnally. So a uh, cool event and uh, looking forward to all of them. Well, let's talk about Venturini real quick because 
most drivers would just be elated and, and satisfied if you were running for the top team on the West Coast, which is McAnally Racing. But you're going out and running for the top team on the East Coast as well at Venturini. And, and like you said, a lot of different races there. But what do you think about heading to Dover and the Monster Mile? And what it would mean to you to bring home Miles the Monster, bring home that iconic trophy. Uh, have you kind of thought about that yet? Because I know I've talked to drivers like Anthony Alfredo that said, you know, hey, going to Daytona was okay, but man, you know, it's an eye opener when you go to Dover and you race at that track. Are you looking forward to that one? Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, it's uh, one of those racetracks that carries a lot of respect with the name and carries a lot of, um, you know, tension with the name. So it's a cool place and, uh, and I'll definitely have to get on the sim lot for it and do my homework for it. One of those places where you got to load fast and it's how I, how, I, how it's been explained to me is, you know, you kind of go as fast as you want to go. So I'm good with that. You know, obviously, you know, I race a lot of wing sprint cars, so, um, that would be uh, kind of right up my alley and, and we'll get after it and, and do our best. And, you know, I know that uh, with our team and, and, with, and with our mentality that we can uh, bring home uh, Miles the Monster. So um, that'll be really cool uh, to do that. And uh, and just overall put our Mo one Toyota Camry up front. And Kevin Reed with the up on the box is going to be really special. So um, we've got a good bond going right now. And, and I, I've been able to go over, over to the shop a lot you know, throughout the past month and a half or so and, and see their operation and, and get to work with them is, is really cool. So. I'm looking forward to it all, and, and Dover is definitely one of those races that's uh, really on everybody's bucket list. Okay, so now let's let's go back to the super late model because you've got 12 weekend dates set with Wimmer Motorsports. I didn't add up exactly how many races that was, but it's almost like 20 when you when you kind of spread it out as, as far as two and three day events. But you're going to be able to go and run at like the National Fairgrounds and Slinger. And you get to go back to Winchester. Mm -hmm. And I know everybody talks about running a super late model at Winchester is an experience. So um, you're looking forward to, to what you're going to be doing with, with Chris and that team and, and going back to at least those three iconic races, I think would be kind of like the highlight of that super late model. Yeah, for sure. Obviously the Derby. Derby, I definitely have. <coughs> oh, I forgot about the Derby. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah little race might not hurt yeah, small um, but no but i mean obviously you know the derby is gonna be you know really important to me and they're all gonna be important to me they're all you know the same at the end of the day i won one all of them so um you know got to go to a lot of uh cool places last year but to go to the events last year it's not really the racetracks as much as it is just the event itself um you know getting to uh obviously go to nashville get to go run winchester all those races uh you know uh, slinger they all carry like a, you know, a lot of uh, precedence with them and same with the Derby. So, um, you know, I have a lot of confidence in my Wimmer team and obviously we're going to rowdies now. So uh, I'm going to have our operation even better now and I'm looking forward to it for sure. It's, uh, you know, such a great opportunity and get to race hard and, and learn a lot. But, um, you know, I've, I've been really pleased with, with how we've been in the super late and uh, get to unload and, and, you know, give Massey and, run for his for, for his money and, and get to beat Bubba and, and you know race all these great, got great guys is uh really cool so just got to uh control everything that we can control and and race hard and that's kind of one of those cool things about the super late stuff is it's like a you know a boxing match the entire time right so um that stuff is cool you know that makes you a better race car driver and I think uh the people that have done a lot of super late racing uh, definitely transfers really well when you go run um ARCA truck it's Randy Cup all these big um, national series. So I'm going to have to get after it. And I got a great, uh, great team with our Wimmer team up from Wisconsin. So, um, Wisconsin breeds really good super late model teams and drivers. Absolutely. So, uh, I'm looking forward to it a lot and, uh, great team behind me. I can't be happier. All right. So one last series that you're going to be competing in is called the TC America series. And you're going to be doing that with tech sport, um, motorsport or tech sport racing, I should say. Um, for a lot of the fans that are kind of watching this interview, tell us a little bit about the TC American series and what kind of car you're going to be racing and exactly the iconic track. We'll talk about a group of iconic tracks. Uh, that's got to be high on your bucket list as well. For sure. Obviously, I'll be in a Toyota 86 for the series with our mobile one colors on it. 
And uh, the team's great. I was able to test with them at Virginia, and, and I felt really fast. And um, overall, it's a cool event and uh, a cool uh, test day and a cool racetrack at Virginia, too. So um, going to a lot of cool racetracks, I think what makes it so important is that I get to go to so many I get to go to these racetracks I'm going to be going to, and I'm going to already have laps on when I go there and the Xfinity truck, cup car, all these things. Right. So, um, you know, to look, to, to name some of them, obviously Sonoma in two weeks, uh, Coda, which hopefully will be on the, on the cup schedule for a long time. Um, Indy, you know, stuff like that. So obviously Indy road course is going to be really cool for me to run. Um, that's uh, a track that uh, carries a lot of, of emotion with me. So, um, I get to go to a lot of cool places and I'm really grateful for it. Toyota has given me such a great opportunity and, uh, and they've really, really just done a great job with me. And, and I'm so grateful to have these opportunities and, and, uh, make the most of them. So, um, a lot of great people at TRD and, and they do, uh, they do a lot for me. So can't thank them enough. Uh, Jack, Tyler, trying all, all those guys. So, um, looking forward to all the events and, and all the tracks. There's really not one track on that schedule that I'm not looking forward to. So, um, get to sharpen my road racing skills some more too. Uh, NASCAR, I think it's a good thing, you know, seeing more road course races on the schedule. Absolutely. So, um, you know, uh, that'll be really cool. And, uh, and we'll get to uh, sharpen my skills on that and uh, keep on developing myself. So it'll be important one day and it'll really pay off. Yeah. Well, Jesse, thanks for being with us tonight. You want to give a quick shout out to your sponsors? Yeah, of course. Thank you, Rod. Uh, thank you, Race Face, for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure. And thank you, everybody, for. Uh, for tuning in every time I do one of these, it's really cool. And um, thank you for tuning into our driving fives as well. So um, thank you, Mobile One. Obviously got the hat on Wimmer. Uh, everybody that uh, gives me these opportunities and TRD, Toyota Race Development. So um, obviously in the West Series, when I have NAP Auto Parts again this year. So that'll be really cool. Uh, a lot of great uh, partners with us this year. So thank you all. And, and we'll make you proud this year. Don't leave out home smiles. Yeah, home smiles, of course. Yeah, <laughs> we had a really good uh, home smiles uh, car with our uh, – Chili Bowl car this year. So that thing was uh, really beautiful and, and a cool car. All right. So we encourage you to follow Jesse Love. If you're not doing that, you can go to jessieloveracing.com. While you're there, make sure to go into the fan zone. Follow him on social media. Sign up for his digital newsletter and a lot of different things. I mean, Jesse and these guys, they got a lot of cool stuff going on. They've got trivia games. So they're very, very active on the social media front. Again, Jesse, Good luck in 2021. I'm sure we'll be hooking up again here in the next three to four months. But go out there, have a great uh, a great season. We wish you, again, all the luck. And, and don't forget, you can get a Jesse Love Harold card just by visiting his website, filling out the form. And, and it's so cool because you get more than a hero card from this guy. You get stickers. You get a personal letter. You get a personal message from him. It's a great package that goes out. Again, Jesse, thanks for being with you with us. And everybody, thank you for watching this edition of Race Space Driver Spotlight. Um, make sure to check us out at racespace.tv. And everyone, Jesse, have a great weekend, and we'll be back with you in two weeks.